Um, okay, so spiritual traits. Uh, question five, what emotion do you feel most often and most strongly? Is this where the empathy would come into play? Um, yes, but again, because this is a human trait, mm -hmm. um, again, you've got this option. You can either pick something about your life that isn't specifically vampiric, and so not like a supernatural empathy, or you could pick a feeling that has since been supplanted since your change. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, obviously, empathy itself is not an emotion, but yeah. if, um... If what about sympathy or compassion or yes. concern? I actually think compassion would be a good one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, what emotion do you feel most often and most strongly? Curiosity. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I see that being her driving thing. A lot of intellectual curiosity and historical curiosity. Okay. Um, make sure it's strongly emotional. Like, it's more and more, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not saying it can't be curiosity, but if it's curiosity, then it should be a, an emotional curiosity. Like, that should be at the core of the character. If it's mm -hmm. more like, I'm interested in things, that's more of a hobby. True. Um, um, then I think what will probably be more true for this character will actually be anxiety. Um, a sense of, because she's so guarded and has to be on her guard fairly often because of the way she feels about her interactions with other people, I think honestly her general emotional state will be one of nervousness. Um, actually, I like that better. I'm going to say nervousness. Mm -hmm. Okay. She's kind of, kind of on pins and needles a lot of the time. And that's what you kind of get with stuffy people. It's They're not like totally relaxed and happy being stuffy. They're like, you know, fiddling, like things need to be in their place. Like, you know, kind mm -hmm. of, that's what stuffy is. Yeah, a little neurotic. Cool. I see it being that way. <laughs> Emotion. Cool. So I like, you know, maybe this is just my like, psychology background coming out, but I, I like the like mad, sad, glad, scared, like as the main emotions. And I really see like this guy is scared that the whole artifice he's created is going to collapse. Like, He's barely propping up all these different aspects of his life to mm -hmm. look good, and like he just lives in constant fear of that happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's kind of yeah. cool. That works. Kind of summarize that as fear of collapsing part of this. That works. Okay. Not a good romance title. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. Okay. So, uh, question six. Name the one person or group that you would never want to disappoint. My family. Okay. Maybe we should be more specific with yours. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. your position implies that. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, like, let's say that you did let the family down. Who would you actually hear it from? Like, who would you be scared about seeing them? The mama. Probably the other major. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's name her. We've been throwing around Agnes. Yeah. I like I like it too. Agnes Acree is a great name. <laughs> and I like that you're not answering this question out of like any sense of morality or responsibility, but more like out of fear. Or like, I mean, like you care about the traditions clearly. Yeah. But but she is going to fuck shit. We all picked way. fear. Is that because it's a horror game? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe we're, we're buying in. Mm -hmm. Agnes Acree. All right. Okay, um, person or group you would not want to disappoint? Um, I see her having a fair amount of emotional commitment to the his this historical work. So I'm going to name a, a historical society here. Um, or something something along those lines. I see her, like, she's really committed to this work. Like, she has this personal connection to the old librarian Horace mm -hmm. that she cares about and the work that she's doing. And she really doesn't want to disappoint these people with like these early pre-revolutionary papers. It's really important antiquity stuff. Mm -hmm. She really doesn't want to screw that up. That's important to her. Who does it benefit to keep that stuff? Maybe that could be the group. Like, why preserve all this history? Who's that for? Yeah, um, yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, there would be. There's like the Daughters of the Revolution. There's the mm -hmm. Mayflower Group. There's um, the Revolutionary History Societies. You feel broader and encompass all of those. Ideas. What about posterity? Posterity. I do not want to disappoint posterity. There you go. Um, 
and that could be that does involve an actual standard because all these groups you've mentioned, like basically anyone's judgment that you have let down mm -hmm. the future. Yeah. So like you've mishandled something that's really important, you've missed an opportunity, mm -hmm. and you don't want to have to go face an a peer or someone who knows you personally in the family yeah. and have them tell you, you know, you screwed this up. This was an important thing for history and you messed it up. Yeah. Posterity. You don't want to let posterity down. And that really feeds into the anxiety of, of being so stuffy yeah. because it's, you know, it's like you really have this anxiety because you're fighting this illusory idea of, like, people in the future. You don't know what they're going to think, you know, you have to think. So it's not even a real person to disappoint. Yeah. You, know, you get the luxury of knowing whether you're disappointed <laughs> or not. Yeah, I just can only hope I haven't let the future down with my work on the history. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and this would be too broad, like, because one of the things about the question is it has to be a standard you can actually fail, mm -hmm. but because you've mentioned lots of groups who will call you on it, I feel like it's okay. Yeah. Austerity for history. Um, so, yeah, I think I said this earlier, I just like audience. So, yeah. basically, you know, the literary audience would be an obvious one, um, it could be something a little closer to home, like maybe people in the local community, or the like fa other famous literary people, you know, agents or something, whatever, whoever, like, uh -huh. you know, people in the literary field, or um, also because of this kind of aristocratic vibe, it could also be uh, other people of high status in the well, society. Families, right. Yeah. Okay. So, the audience. Cool. Yeah. Whoever's watching. Yeah. <laughs> that's you. <laughs> yeah, I like it. That's, that's cool. good. So the audience. Um, let's see. Uh, Q7, what is your calling? Um, and this one's worth kind of discussing because you can answer it in a number of different ways. Um, it can be a strong idea about what's important in life. Um, it can be a thing you feel like you were born to do, so something you've kind of discovered. Or it can be a sense of what your end is going to be, like what your destiny is. Mm -hmm. um, any of those will work for this. I feel like my character would feel like her calling is to be the matriarch because that's what's been ingrained into her. Okay. Sure. I like it. And that's a, it could potentially be a source of conflict with the current matriarch mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so become the matriarch, be the matriarch. Um, what about you? What is your calling? I think she sees her calling as a, a calling to preservation and understanding, mm -hmm. especially of of history. Um, so I'm trying to think of a good way to summarize that to to preserve and understand history. Okay. Sure. I mean like it, Is it to collect? Like do you want to learn the preservation is important to her. Mm -hmm. Like the physical work of it okay. is important to her. So it's not just like to know. And no, it's like this is knowledge. Yeah. It's like a to proper, properly archive and yeah. Maybe to yeah. transmit is that like kind of. Thing? Because the thing is, for her is like she doesn't have to transmit all of it. The main mm -hmm. like what she feels called to do is to find these things, bring them together, and make them accessible. Like she's really called to the work of a historian and really called to the okay. work of an archivist yeah. um, to protect these resources and keep them from disrepair and because they're getting so old to mm -hmm. make things these kinds of early things available. Let me I, I don't want to interject too much into your character, but this just occurred to me and it totally matches our theme. What if it is to save the past? Mm. Like because these are documents that are literally falling apart. Yeah. 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 This is no. history that is disappearing no one will ever know. Yeah. And so that way you can be a modern person who's actually reaching back and trying to get and keep this past that's fading away for this family. Yeah, I, I really see that as being part of her mission. Like, I'm, I'm thinking some of her earlier work was in digitizing other archival collections and trying to save these early documents and protect these early records because they're going to continue to be relevant. Mm -hmm. They're going to continue to be important to understanding particular times. Mm -hmm. And so she wants to wants to prese protect them, preserve them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think we can, we can sum that up. Cool. Um... Calling. Yeah, um, I guess I keep coming back to the same thing, but um, I said storytelling um, in text and in life. It says all about creating a good story um, yeah. wherever it's yeah. happening. Okay. So I, I think my guy, you know, Spinning writing is a calling because he can do it and, it and he enjoys it, but it's, you know, living a very, uh, creating a story in life would be just as satisfying. And, mm. you know, it's, 
It's kind of about wherever you can get it out. Yeah, I like that. To tell a story. Uh, okay, so Q8, what ritual or habit do you use to keep yourself grounded? So, I'd like to think that we have a courtyard at the house. Well, yeah. And that she would like to go sit in the garden and kind of relish in these last few moments that she has in the sunlight. Uh -huh. Because she knows that her time is drawing near, and so she likes to sit out in the garden and just sit and be in the sun as she can. I love the image of that because since the eyes are the first to go, mm -hmm. you kind of have to have your eyes closed. Like you have to go sit, not being able to see, just feel the sun. Because and you're... smell the roses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Just be in the garden. I think this character might actually, I'm not sure if I want to put this into something she does physically or not yet, but she's so in her head most of the time and kind of neurotic. I wanted to have something that she does, like maybe she does yoga or maybe she swims or something that she does to kind of get her out of her head for a while and she finds that very centering, very grounding, um, something to help her. I like the idea of swimming because they're like this ocean town, you know, and yeah. this like fishing kind of, you know. And it's cold water, it's very demanding swimming. Yeah. I like, I'm gonna go with that, swim in the ocean once or twice a week. Okay. So my idea is that, um, you know, this guy used to have a drug addiction and now that kind of pales in comparison to the new addiction. So both the support group and the drugs like wildly switching back and forth between which is the best way to cope at that time because you know, the normal drug addiction, I don't even know if drugs work on these vampires, that would be an issue, but that's part of, you know, using those doesn't seem so bad anymore compared to the new addiction. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think as, as an aspect of the strain that we've built, <clears throat> you have a, um, a basically living physiology, assuming you've recently fed. Yeah, exactly. So during that time, you'd be able to use the drug um, I like this, maybe just like the addiction game. Like, either go to the meetings or okay. binge. I like addiction game, that's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. And I just want it to be kind of, yeah, it doesn't, it's not just a boring, like, I go to my support group every week and I feel better. It's like, you know, what mood if, am I in? What's, what's going on? Mm -hmm. What's right there in front of me? What can I do yeah. today? Yeah, what will work? Mm -hmm. I like the flexibility of that too, because this character seems to fluctuate a lot. Mm -hmm. Having the, that room in how am I going to get myself back on my feet today is going to vary. And I really like the, the kind of irony of, you know, this drugs becoming a way to avoid falling into the bad habits of addiction. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. I have a worse addiction now, so who cares about <laughs> drugs, you know? <laughs> right. I still but using the same support group essence. for those drugs, like, they yeah. can't see you doing that, but maybe that's what you need to not go do something worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool.